Hi, this is Irv Shapiro of the Dr. Vax channel. And last week on Wednesday, I returned from CES, the Consumer Electronics Show 2019. From the point of view of 3D printing, it was a bust. It was underwhelming. Stay tuned and I'll tell you what I saw and what I didn't see that I expected to see. Okay, let's learn something together. So first, before I get started, I want to sh give a shout out to Joel from 3D Printing Nerd. Joel at 3D Printing Nerd and Angus at Maker's Muse are two of the personalities on YouTube that I learned the most about 3D printing from. And they really, in essence, were my mentors, my teachers. It was very exciting to be able to shake Joel's hand. Great guy. Highly recommend uh, 3D Printing Nerd as a channel that you should watch. Now, in terms of CES, first, as you'll see in the pictures, it was enormous. It was gigantic. It was big. Everything there was big. If my iPhone is accurate, I walked 10.2 miles walking through three different expo halls at CES. So CES as a show overall was very, very impressive. Some of the things that were impressive were obvious. Big companies had big displays. Sony was there. Panasonic's booth area, display area was the size of a city. Samsung, in fact, called their area a city. Televisions are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And newsflash, if you haven't bought your 4K television yet, it might be too late. 8K was all over the place. But does it matter? Can you really see that level of detail? Are you going to want to pay your cable provider enough money for them to have a big enough pipe into your house to transmit to you 8K images? These are enormous, enormous images images to watch a typical uh, movie or television show. Another thing that was everywhere you looked, you saw drones, you saw robots, and you saw virtual reality. Take a look at this drone clip. Fascinating. These were, this was a swarm of drones that were all dancing to music together. Likewise, here's a video clip of a bunch of robots dancing to music together. And there were virtual reality seats and headsets everywhere you looked. Two companies seemed to almost make a big comeback, and that was Polaroid and Kodak. They both, both announced 3D printers at the show. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Overall, the 3D printing area was a relatively small area. Uh, perhaps there were dozen, 15 companies displaying in that area. Kodak and Polaroid were not in that area. There were a couple other companies that also were not in that area. But in total, the number of companies that were involved in 3D printing, manufacturing filament or devices, uh, was relatively limited this year. However, an executive from Formlabs in a press release right before CES made a very valuable point, and that is that perhaps as many as 80% of the new products announced at CES were originally prototyped in part or in whole on 3D printers. So the impact of 3D printing in our world is dramatic, but the impact directly on consumers as the device is less dramatic. What I did notice was that materials were more important in some ways at this show than devices. Polymaker announced two new filaments, Polymaker Max, which is a enhanced, stronger PETG. And they also uh, announced a new dissolvable filament, um, eSun, and Yusu were both there with significant spaces announcing new filaments. Uh, in particular, I was impressed with the eSun TPU 
they had insoles for shoes um, that were very, very impressive. And I learned something fascinating from Yusu. What I learned is that PolySmooth, the material from Polymaker, is not a unique chemistry that they only have. Uh, they may have a specific formulation, but overall PolySmooth is just PVB. Now we've heard of PVA, that's the water solu soluble uh, materials, filaments that are used for supports. Well, PVB is a derivation of that that is manufactured in a way, is formulated in a way that it dissolves in alcohol. And Yusu announced a PVB filament. And in fact, if you go on Amazon, you'll see there are a number of companies now that are making PVB. So I expect to see this new type of filament, which is smoothed with alcohol, become more prevalent. Now, PVB is also an impressive material. It's the plastic that's put in bulletproof glass between the layers because it's very flexible and docile. It bends before it breaks, yet it's still relatively strong. So that was an interesting thing I learned at CES. Now, a number of industrial printmakers, such as Mark Forge um, and Ray's 3D were there showing off their latest devices. There were a number of companies showing devices that print in metal. ANET was there with a variety of printers. I was most impressed with a new desktop Delta printer. You'll see a little clip of it here that they were showing. The features seem perfect for a desktop printer. It seemed relatively easy to use. Uh, I'm not sure pricing information is available yet. Unfortunately, it requires a smaller filament spool and therefore um, you have to right now, I guess, buy the filament only from ANET. I think that's an unfortunate decision that all too many printer manufacturers make. In addition, I never realized the breadth of the XYZ um, 3D printing company. Um, it's part of a large Chinese conglomerate. They have a range of printers that go from very small, their nano desktop printer, to very, very large. And they have a new printer, which is rather remarkable. It'll come in two different sizes. It's a printer that combines 3D style desktop printing inks with a special filament to allow you to print in any color. Just like you can 3D print on paper in any color, this uses that type of inkjet technology combined with the filament technologies in order to print in a wide range of colors. I think that's a very, very interesting technology um, that I will uh, be looking to follow. I'd love to get my hands on one of those printers in the future. Now, in terms of Kodak, Kodak's new printer is a fair, relatively high-end device at $3,500. It's designed to provide better color and dimensional accuracy than most desktop printers, um, and it's clearly positioned at um, desktop professional use. I'm not sure yet, depending on the filament, whether it will be in the medical side where Kodak already has a large presence, it'll be in the architectural or the modeling side. Polaroid, on the other hand, introduced a range of 3D printing pens and a 3D printer that's, I think, about 450 euro. Both those products initially will only be available in Europe. Um, and Polaroid as a company was very interesting because they had a wide range of devices from their legacy cameras that they've brought back to printers that are used with uh, smartphones to even headsets and uh, Bluetooth devices. Their 3D printer had very, very good specs, but a relatively small build volume. I think it was 150 by 150 by 150. Um, but it did auto level, heated print bed, and does use standard industry open source filaments. So the Polaroid printer could, if it is available worldwide, uh, could be a way to really introduce 3D printing to families. In conclusion, my experience at the Consumer Electronics Show CES was very, very interesting. It's a show I'll go to again just for the fun of it. 
in terms of 3D printing, the presence was minimal. And I believe the reason is that CES is not focused on makers. There was no presence there for companies like Adafruit that provide kits for assembling electronics. Um, there are clearly nothing you would see in a hardware store. There were no cordless appliances, cordless drills. Um, there were robotic automated vacuums, but nothing really beyond that. So if you're a maker, someone who creates stuff, CES is not going to be a place you really find stuff. And the reason is, it's a location for things already made. But as a maker in the 3D printing space, what was interesting were the new materials that are available that are going to revolutionize the range and breadth of components, of appliances, of things we can build with 3D printers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what to do. If you like this video, please like it, please subscribe, and please forward this video to anyone else who would enjoy it. Thanks. Let's continue learning things together.